All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I am very excited to bring our first speaker today. He's coming directly from Bangalore, India, where he leads SAP's artificial intelligence efforts. And I'm talking about Raul Lodi. Raul Lodi is here with us to talking about challenges in realizing AI use cases for enterprises and the way forward. Raul has been with us before. He has deep understanding, expertise, and practice of these concepts. It's a, always an honor to be with, with to be with you, Raul. Raul has over 20 years of experience and has been with SAP for more than 17 years. Currently, he's responsible for the artificial intelligence platform for realizing and scaling AI and machine learning use cases for industries and line of business. He has extensive experience in design, development, and product management of enterprise software products. He's playing a key role in the NASCOM COVID-19 industry task force to build COVID-19 data platforms for India. And he's also involved in government policy review and published books on AI for school students with the government of India, Niti Ayago Atal Tinkering Lab. Raul, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for sharing your expertise with our global audience today. It's Raul, my you're muted right to now. Be, you know, yep. Thank you. Uh, it, it's, it's my always pleasure to be part of this event and uh, sharing my experiences from the industry to the broader audience. Josh, are you able to hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you now. Just waiting for your screen yeah. share and you can go on. Yeah, I am waiting for my uh, screen share option. Okay. Yeah, it has come through now. Okay, excellent. So you, you can able to see my first screen, I believe. Yes, we can. Good, excellent. So um, yeah, we, we are going to talk about the challenges in interval adoption at the same time, just to take you through the sneak peek of the trend what going on on the ai uh, 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 ai areas for uh, maybe 2021 uh, on uh, after 2020 that we started with a lot of pandemic issues but we will go to touch upon uh, also interestingly on the how the enterprises with adoption adopting the ai and the challenges they are uh, facing uh, yeah this is the experience uh, of what i bring out to me uh, here uh, with um, uh, the role that i am playing for uh, SAP uh, in the space of AI uh, and also working with uh, many customers uh, as well as we are building a platform on the AI side with the thought leader. Also working with the government agencies and, and different places as well. So uh, let's look at how does AI been evolved uh, during the uh, uh, during the 20, uh, 2020 and now the priority is getting towards the 2021. What we see the pandemic has has really taught us that how does the AI to be uh, to be get predicted and uh, and make it the the little more smarter than what we anticipated. So before I think during 20, 2019 we always had to in order to run some prediction we need to have large amount of data uh, uh, that to be available. We need to have uh, access to the uh, huge amount of uh, data sets uh, and and it's not possible that we could able to manage things uh, with the with the smaller data uh, data sets. I think one thing that didn't happen is that because of pandemic, the lot of areas were got disrupted, especially supply chain management, we have prioritization has been changed and all that been happening, even for the healthcare point of view and the way with the research been happening, all been, been uh, you know, a need to be work on the shorter scale of data and whatever been traditionally happening, that's something that has been, uh, 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 has been maybe not applicable uh, or maybe the short span of data that we need to, predict what can happen in next week or what can happen in uh, in next days and that's where the mini algorithms innovation happen in the side of that how i can get the small sample of data and based on that how i can uh, uh, build the uh, let's say a logistics model or, or what the impact that i see of a, of a healthcare division that could happen because of what's happening right now because of the pandemic so i would say that that's the one area has been very largely got disrupted other area is where we see the uh, the chatbots or conversational AI has will become a little more uh, smarter. Now many uh, in many cases we see the usage of Alexa's or um, uh, I mean Google has has a new bot bot in there. The interaction uh, of a, of a human with the system 
is getting redefined now. So going forward as an enterprise application, that everyone would like to have interaction with the system, not by a typing or, or, or interacting with that, but by the more with NLPs or, or the way we talk to the system. And system, we wanted interestingly to understand that how that can be taken care and, and it could execute the command that I explained to the uh, to the system directly. So uh, the chatbots are, are getting more intelligent. The way of interface going to be more on the conversational way of it that rather than going to the directly interacting with system and, and as much as not only the system interaction but also the human uh, or, or application interaction of a human are also going to change appliances instruction going to change i mean you are looking at how the, the alex has been able to switch off switch on the light we look for this um, the home appliances like a robot which will tell that go and uh, clean up something at some period of time uh, so it is all is not possible uh, without uh, the evolution would happen that how the human interact with the any appliance or or any system for electronic or a normal system also that's going to be disrupted and a lot of research happening on this side and, and they are getting more and more predictable going forward uh, another area uh, where we see a lot of traction happening with the space of automation with the uh, robotic uh, process automation the many enterprises been doing it I, I would surprise is your enterprise is not thinking in this direction but many uh, places where there are the manual approvals are happening or or you have a you know uh, the desk job which is going on where uh, yeah somebody getting let's say the uh, just uh, getting the email saying that i want a particular laptop in a particular way uh, is that the system can itself interpret that information and create directly the purchase order for you rather than there are a couple of colleagues are are waiting and, and looking to do that so uh, there have been a lot of uh, a lot of uh, innovation happening how uh, the system uh, how the data is coming from system get interpreted and trigger the next process uh, which could be also automatically happening even the uh, the creating the purchase orders creating the requisition creating the return goods because the the hard document that were there they are they are now no more uh, history of handwritten documents are also can be readable by the system and they can do the activity uh, as a next as suggested uh, or, or algorithm typically uh, coded for for them so this is the area which which there we see a lot of uh, changes being been coming up now um the another area is that um, the, the data unability uh, 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 level of the how, how this um uh, the can be made available because data is the important part for when we talk about the ai and ai cannot be produced any good algorithm or or it cannot be make any end-to-end -end business processes uh, uh, possible without you have a good access to the data and this is the problem which been quite a lot worked upon there are a lot of algorithm get, get pushed to the data level how the data can be bring it together in order to ensure that we get the uh, uh, right level of algorithm uh, produce uh, and uh, 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 and also the accuracy could be improvised based on that. So important part is that this data ubiquity uh, 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 is the important area which creates uh, uh, quite, I would say, with the initial phase of disruption, but we say 2021, a lot of algorithm going to come up, how they you can bring up this data layer much more stronger and many algorithms can be pushed at the data layer so for the model that uh, that we build on top of it for machine learning and ai it, it could be very seamlessly uh, to be used for us um, the important area also which is very very close to everyone and we have to bother about it is the ai ethics or the uh, responsible ai because the small human error in the code can make a wrong decisions and and uh, maybe the million of transaction can go bad as as and when we start trusting the ai more uh, or, or we write the, the self-learning or, or retraining algorithms more into the models or we tell system what right way to do it it's also important that we have to be judicial about we are not getting into the privacy issues uh, we had to look at that how much system could do it uh, the other the less of the human uh, interaction um, or, or, or the, the error part which get impacted to the human life. So we had to really take a cautious decision uh, that we had to, uh, how the AI could become, uh, uh, you know, uh, self um, uh, and and set the limit that uh, where the AI could not, should and be the stepping out uh, from the uh, from the human part versus the 
uh, the what we do and from the ethics point of view. Uh, very soon, there has been talks about that, uh, and it's a big debatable topic that how is the AI ethics need to be set up. But there are the government policies are coming out there. Uh, the companies has been building their own policies around that as well, and they are looking to that how uh, how the AI could could be a more potentially uh, 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 restrictive in the cases or or how it could could be the govern at at some level at least uh, but yeah this very important topic where it has to be used in a, in a right way um yep so uh, looking at into the uh, uh to the next section that we look at about the trends going on on the aic but as as here we talk about the enterprises right and most of us are belong to the to the many enterprises uh, being envisioning either on the journey of ai or uh, we need to uh, look at that uh, how the AI to be adopted into your organization, maybe some high level strategy that uh, that, that I can show the light on. Uh, but as uh, Joe say, we could have more like a discussion going forward to uh, and I can answer the more details how it could be there. So first and foremost, to understand the, the value of AI and how the uh, adaptability of the AI or harmonization to be there. So the, something which is just constantly changing nowadays is the all the systems around us right so where we talk about the real time uh, 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 uh real time situation awareness or we talk about the harmonized business processes there's the only channel being changing or ecosystem being disrupted with a different part of it the on frame to cloud disruption is, uh, uh, is happening on the system point of view there so it's, it's very important that when we build the ai in today's environment it has to be thought through from a scalability point of view because many of the change that happening around us is just a constant thing. We are not, we don't need to assume that is going to be, uh, you know, there, but the, at the same time, we have to be, uh, uh, be adaptable efficiently uh, and innovate, uh, you know, ever more important in the today's environment, which is, uh, which is the key uh, uh, for the enterprises to, to think about. If we are building something which is rigid, considering the today's constraint, we are going to face challenges uh, going forward. So uh, we have to consider about the ecosystem which is changing and, and how does this, uh, uh, how does the solution that we build uh, uh, or, or capitalize on this opportunity from a scalability perspective. Um, looking at how, how does the AI going to be reinvent the businesses, uh, there are high level broadly from the AI perspective. Um, it, it has the three categories if, if we look at it. The first category is that we look at the AI function. So that's where we talk about more technically the deep learning model, the, uh, uh, the machine learning, uh, the scalability across the, the IT could happen. Uh, there are many open source technologies are, are coming up to how should we uh, 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 how should we create the more efficient model or, or how does the, uh, let's say the, the model can be picked the visual recognition model in some cases, something we have called as the statistical models can be built. So there are a lot of core functionalities being developed and, and make it available to us. So that's the one area where the lot of new innovation will happening. Second area is that as we see the business intelligent process automation, and then this uh, area where uh, many mandan processes are people are looking at that how i can use the machine learning and ai to improvise that how how can get them more profitable how i can get them more efficient with that today the processes because of multiple approval it was taking four five days and and the manual intervention people are sitting on the pile of document to make it happen how can just i can take the scan of the document and the scanning scan provided to me can immediately create the new process automatically rather than someone has to really code the data into the system to, to create a document and then how this multi-level approval can be taken place. So these are the areas which are uh, more uh, disrupted, uh, we say are, are getting disrupted right now. And again, we talk about the how the next generation UI. So interface are really going to be changed. We see already the uh, the difference, the way we interact in our day-to-day -day life going forward, which we, every company has their bot to interact with you. They want to reduce the human resources in terms of uh, serving the basic queries to you. Uh, but at the same time, also uh, the interaction with the system is going to be uh, uh, generated via the way we interact with, with a human. The system will understand your language very easily and uh, provide you uh, your solution rather than 
you do a lot of activities by uh, uh, by yourself which takes you uh, some more time to figure out that thing so uh, the user interaction with using the conversational ai or chatbot is, is going to change and there is definitely the huge amount of uh, uh, the, of the market that that we are talking about um, and it's also the enterprise market which is about 3.9 trillion uh, which was predicted i would say uh, maybe a, a year back which eventually is also getting to the uh, to the next level that that we'll see by 2025 so th there are definitely an opportunity and especially when you look at the potential opportunity uh, from an enterprises point of view uh, which is the, the key functional area that uh, uh, that that we like to see one is the supply chain management uh, is is the area where uh, already uh, the uh, at least the 50 percent of the large global companies are using ai and their advanced analytics iot supply chain operation would be going to be scale up uh, uh, quite quite extensively second era is procurement so we see the how uh, large uh, and the um, uh, the individual task involved to the source to pay uh, their potential to be fully large automated and that's where the the chatbot and kind of things going uh, are going to become feature uh, the third area is the fintech that that we have been talking about and every company almost deal with, uh, uh, with here and there are the automation chances are very high uh, in this particular industry so these are the areas where where, where the technology and the potentially uh, change there but it's very important also to understand that the the ai is is uh, it's not easy thing to to achieve our uh, uh, artificial intelligence is, is not just to be you know uh, uh, there when, when I have a problem in hand and, and just I could you know take it forward it's, it throws you a lot of challenges and, and that's where uh, we look at it there are about the um, yeah 85 percent of uh, uh, of the AI projects which struggle to make it to the uh, uh, to the production uh, there are the, uh, uh, the areas because of the uh, people feel that I have a good amount of uh, complexity in the, in the system, but always achieving that is is very very uh, a very very narrow chance. Same thing, the many organizations feel that there is a, a the, the com complexity that that they have in order to achieve the AI because of the failure rate is high. Uh, the data is been typically built in the traditional way, and that traditional data is not uh, uh, not bought in. Uh, uh, into the system where the way AI wanted to consume um, and data is typically been segregated into the different different forms and uh, uh, getting that complexity uh, that you have data coming from on-prem, data coming from your cloud system, data coming from your uh, uh, your uh, uh, traditional system, I would say, but also data coming from your IoT devices now. So how should I blend that data together in order to get really uh, an important part that, that I wanted to consume of? Importantly, also, there is a shortage of resources. I would say still last two or three years, we have been, at least last year, we've been very, uh, very good where we there's been a lot of education happening around AI and, and we see a lot of new data science uh, profiles been coming up there, AI engineers being developed. But still, there there are need to be have still the deep understanding of how the DI project will be like successful. It's important to to understand uh, in this context. To uh, to especially to to handle this this challenge of how should I have I could make my AI project successful, we have to really reimagine our business processes, and the reimagination of our business processes is uh, looking at first way of how can I maximize the value from the data that uh, uh, the, the, that you have, right? So uh, I know my data is, is in the bits and pieces as, a, as in multiple places available, I is in the raw format, how I can make it more readable way of data, how can I curate data together, how can I connect to the all uh, all, uh, all of them uh, together and unify them in order to someone can able to understand it. Uh, how I can duplicate data can uh, can remove there. So the cleansing of the data and getting all the data uh, data together. So I that's a strength that 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 you have to focus on. And that's a bigger challenge area that you have to build it before you think about making the AI uh, uh, AI implementation. Once you solve your data problem, you have to look at that. Uh, how do you implement the AI more confidently and and bring it the AI uh, and the machine learning models. 
uh, also understand uh, and explain the worthiness of the result and also automation uh, 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 and the scale of it. So once I adopt the AI, it shouldn't be only, you know, make for a particular, uh, let's say business unit or particular dealership or particular country. When I'm making it, I had to also see that this is going to scale exponentially because it's all the data centric solutions and the data centric solution has to be work on uh, in conjunction with the other uh, data objects that, um, uh, the, uh, that we used to. So it has to be work in, in conjunction uh, with the other data sources uh, and scale uh, horizontally as an as and required. And also the model has to be trustworthy. Uh, it should be explainable. If you're saying that it is providing you a particular set of results, you should know why this particular set of results being provided and not the other wise one. So the explainability is the, is the key part uh, uh, to it when we build the uh, uh, build the AI projects. And also the last and uh, the important part is compliance because compliance is somewhere where the people should have only authority of data who wanted to add, to, to add that data. And the monitoring of the data and quality of data should be should be uh, also a uh, govern is not available for everything for, for everyone and also organization data is important because not every data set should be accessible to the uh, uh, to the everyone and it should be very contextual to the particular person if not required it can be analyzed other field and only the the model which need to consume data that only could be provided so data analyzation data governance um, as well as the uh, uh, the compliance data is very important part when, when you are dealing with the AI project. Otherwise, it's very easy to use the personal and private data of someone that can be uh, can be misused by, by someone else as, as you deal are dealing with the AI set of data sets. Um, uh, the, the, when we look at the, the AI, the, which are the personas are typically impacted across your enterprises. So AI across reaches to the uh, to the different or uh, personas in your organization. Importantly, the CIO, who is uh, kind of struggle uh, with the uh, 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 with the requirement that that he didn't understand uh, from that. Your know, data science this guys. So data science is always wanted to work on the uh, fast evolving algorithms. So they want to work on the new algorithm. Uh, uh, how, how I can make it the best open source algorithm to be used and get prediction much faster way and now can get the better prediction in this case. Then you have the IT engineer or what we called as the ML ops or DevOps persona. Now he's the guy who always uh, wanted to put things into production, but yeah, he has not seen the facing things before because many times the data science guy is typically work on the, uh, the work on based on the uh, whatever the, uh, the open source or documentation and and, 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 and he has with him. Uh, so the, these are the challenges that that the individual persona who, who look forward to. But yeah, before getting into the what can be done in order to solve these challenges, we have to understand what is all about is the enterprise AI, right? Why we did talk about the enterprise artificial intelligence. What is this artificial intelligence that we're talking about is the enterprise level versus the normal AI intelligence. So it's very important to understand that concept first before we get to the solution of, of it or, or some of the approaches or strategy that, that maybe we, uh, we, we talk about now. Uh, the importantly, uh, what we need to understand is the, uh, the enterprise AI is you have to think through from the end-to-end -end perspective. It's not that you only build your model, show some good results, everything looks cool, uh, and then once you try to productize it, uh, it, it throws us out there, right? So enterprise AI is something where you build the AI project from the data, where your data is coming from, how your data is going to the pipeline, uh, how you are getting to, how the data is getting fit to your uh, your uh, uh, your models, and how does that that model can get extracted data to your business processes? Because at the end of the day, uh, the every AI uh, uh, project that you do that has to be disturbed to your business processes, and business processes are important uh, in this case to be to be adoptable. So. When we talk about the normal AI, maybe you create some POC, some project, get some data in Excel sheets, show some good output, uh, and then it all looks cool. But when you think about the enterprise AI, it has to think through from the business processes point of view, and the, how the, how I, am I going to manage the uh, uh, the value of the AI based on the what business process that I'm going to impact, and the value has to be think from there, not from the what the, the AI outcome is, is going to be uh, there, uh, which can be also you can generate via Excel sheet. But that, that value that you are getting, that can be think through from the 
managing your data, uh, managing your uh, your development of your model, as well as improving the data unification and the consumption of your uh, your inference of your AI to the your business process. Maybe you are showing something on the uh, on the dashboard. Uh, analytics could be your consumption, or you are creating some RPA. Uh, uh, job or or you are uh, making that to trigger some other business processes throughout that, but yeah, this has to be end to end come together in the application at, at the one place that to realize that part. Also, uh, uh, importantly, we need to understand what is the, um, the intelligent information management process, right? So, how do I discover and refine, compose and conduct and orchestrate it at, at the at same place? How I, how I can govern? So, I need to have a tools which which can work with my new variation of a data which is coming in so data is coming in now from the your on-prem system your online streaming system your social medias or data is also coming from the your cloud-based systems now how can i discover and and then get the data from all those things so i really need to have a good tooling which can support in that way how i can compose and conduct the orchestration of of the data so not only bring the data together, but also I have to place the data there. I need to do some kind of the put the logic on top of the data where, where the pipeline that I'm creating can be disturbed or, or, or disjoint such a way that it can produce me a right output. And finally, how I can go on and compliance as well. So tooling with that I, that I build it, how I'm going to uh, uh, to make a governance uh, around that. So uh, the right data is available for, for, uh, for the right audience and not that everyone is able to see that part. That's that's called the intelligent information management system that you need to think of of building it uh, in order to make your AI project successful. Um, let's, let's look at how, how, how do you reimagine your AI business processes or, or I would say the adoption of our AI business processes. So in this case, firstly, you need to have a foundation of the AI process like you have to think as an assembly line. And first to get the data, so you get that you, you get this street data, uh, structure, unstructured data coming from there. Then you would learn. So then you have uh, maybe you use the tool to orchestrate data together, uh, make the agile uh, uh, development process. Uh, you create the model that that what you need to be built for the data in order to manage it and 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 uh, see the what right technique that your AI project required. But you. You train the model, you build that model, and and, and then then deploy the model. So uh, then you think about once you the deployment of the model, you really bring the scalability of the model, review the model performance on a regular basis, make the refinement uh, and the enhancement to the model, and also you have to very importantly look forward for the how should you uh, replace and retire the model as well, because as well as you are monitoring your model, the AI project can be successful. It can't be successful is only you deployed once and just leave it as is it, it's not like a normal software development code as you build the application and then the application will, will run to serve you for a longer time but in this case unless you if your data is changing uh, 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 your training data what model you have trained and your accuracy is not getting accurate then uh, your project will get for cells out there and very important part of the connect because this is where where you would have a consumption of your AI to your business processes. And until the time you don't connect them together with the business processes, the value that, that you like to get out is, uh, uh, is not going to be complete. And that's where we talk about the enterprise AI project are failing many places where uh, we see that either uh, either you don't have all the pieces in this diagram as not thought through completely from end to end perspective, uh, either you just build a model or or you just build the data, but when you think about the complete into end business processes, the chances of success is much much higher, and 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 that's where you can able to uh, uh, to to understand it in a, in a better way. And if you think from this from beginning, I'm sure you're all the personas will get their answers uh, to know that uh, you know uh, you know upfront that how much cost that's going to be. Uh, make it happen you know what kind of tooling you are going to use it and and uh, where you are going to deploy and how this complexity to be to be solved uh, in advance uh quickly want to show you an example uh, uh from the real-time manufacturing industry as sap is being uh into uh, into the more uh, business processes area uh, this is the uh, example of the predictive quality manufacturing plant where uh it's typically the the from the mold the, uh, the product comes out 
and the product has to be or or what are the component that comes out that has to be tested automatically definitely because manual testing of let's say piston which going in your car with a that uh, i would say thousands of pistons get get created every day and checking that the quality is, is not efficient uh, in this case uh, we definitely looking forward for getting the ir images which typically tell me the uh, the component has been built as per the dimension or not and there is a machine learning model which we run to compare that with the uh, with the visual uh, uh, visual validation that the all the uh, 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 the model has been created as per the expected uh, image then we have a pressure data because we check the whether these particular uh, when i put a pressure sensor pressure on this particular component automatically is it able to sustain it that the, the material used it is being being used for so it can use in the production uh where it's used right away and then also i to blend this data with my material master what happened if i don't think from an end-to-end -end perspective i can create all these component in silo because they use different technologies uh at the moment i can create this uh, sensor data coming storing into the kafka on regular basis i have these irv images coming because they are heavy we have to store uh, store into the cloud uh, i run some r model created path which could give me the image comparison and then uh, give me the uh, the output of that uh, but yeah, again to to the prediction based on the my master data that i have coming from erp i need to have another system to get connected so if the all the system at this joint is not that i am going to get the complete uh, overview of of them so what i need to have that i do think from a beginning that how this whole system to be realized and how i am going to uh, uh, to create this data pipelining uh, and then the inference of the activities and the predictive dashboard in the quality app that i'm going to uh, going to make it through so i would bring it this kafka event streaming also to the cloud uh, uh, framework by the data pipelining the data that coming from my ir images the inference of data the data image processing happening there and then outcome of this both things i would send to the let's say in this case the sap hana system which basically uh, uh, blending this uh, this data with the even looking at not only the current quality of the product but also giving based on historic quality the prediction uh, uh, a prediction grid uh, dashboard for for my usage so this is what uh, how you will solve the problem uh, in nutshell what uh, 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 how does the, this ai project has to be to be bring up uh, to success you have to always embrace the open source technology you can't just think of uh, you build the uh, some homegrown part because ai is been a very disruptive environment so the architecture that you you look forward for your organizations you should always look at that something which can embrace or scale with the open source technology believe me every 6 months is been changing uh, quite heavily and it would it is there to be again evolved uh, to to leverage the open source so what today you are building as assumption that you are making it may not be valid uh, for tomorrow uh, at the same time the runtime that you use also it should be adopt to the maybe r python spark and there are many more new technologies coming in there very importantly the, the layer on which you build your scalability is very important that you should always look forward for google documentors kind of environment which is the scalable um, horizontally as as a, as is demands because today let's say you are building application for the one system uh, one environment one company uh, one country yeah, but eventually this has to be scaled out to the multiple companies multiple organizations and you don't need to be in a situation where your application is not scaling because of the way you you write the uh, wrote your environment it should be always be the kind of containerized uh, system uh, using docker or then and then run on the kubernetes cluster so you can use your choice of hyperscaler but at least it should be the something which is the categorized system which can scale it uh, as as and when it's required so uh, the this is the way forward for making it more successful and scalable environment to build for your uh, enterprises um definitely how how should we we get started uh, so you should always i would say suggest start you should look at that um, how you should build the uh, the first your information management system uh, followed by you build your visualization dashboard so all your data that that you want to curate uh, in order to achieve your business goal is is all all visible and then top of that you do the initial learning experimentation uh, build the Uh, get your uh, uh, the the machine learning models, get the use cases on top of it, 
and then build the uh, build the right AI projects and and select the right technology that support you for the building the AI the output, and then uh, you deploy those model uh, uh, and then uh, uh, do the machine learning uh, on top of it and try to scale it up. At the end of the day, you try to um, uh, augmentation that into your business processes, uh, either in the automation or your business process to be to be influenced on that. So this is the way forward for for being a successful of adoption of the of the AI uh, uh, for your organizations. And uh, yeah, that that's pretty much that 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 I have to share you. Uh, I have open more than happy to take the questions. Excellent coverage, Raul. I really appreciate that. Fantastic. We're going to be uh, relaying some of the questions. If you, if the audience still has additional questions, uh, keep providing them. I'm keeping tabs on them. Um, uh, I'm going to pass it on to Raul in the time that we have allocated here. Raul, first of all, thank you for for a great comprehensive view of uh, AI today and really how it's uh, how you see being deployed across different enterprises and the challenges that uh that you face and uh and also the 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 path forward you create you provide a very nice um uh, best practice approach if you can call it that way uh to how how we should deploy ai effectively in our organizations what do you see in the marketplace today that is one of the common themes on the questions here is what do you see in the marketplace today related to ai that's uh that maybe it's advice that's being dispensed by certain experts, but it's really not that helpful. It's maybe someone who wrote a book about AI, but someone who is not really practicing AI. From a practitioner standpoint, what 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 type of advice is either not helpful, or maybe we can flip that and say, what is most helpful for a practitioner to that that's implementing AI in their organization right now to get right? Yeah. So, um, as, as, as I also sharing during my presentation, as a practitioner, I mean, reading books and and lot of theory available on the AI is 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 there. Uh, I don't suggest to go go through every them of the them. Making your hand dirty is is the right way. And as as we look at that, it has to show you the value of your business process. So first, you should get convinced about this particular AI implementation is going to give you the value for the business processes. Then you should look at that in, and come backward from there, right? So let's say I'm talking about the making the RPA kind of investment there, or you you have, you know, reduce the, uh, uh, reduce your footprint uh, by implementing the simple project of the visual inspection kind of stuff there. Then you look at the, what kind of data you have, you build your data, data sets, you make it curative uh, step by step. And then uh, uh, make a make a simple AI project, and then uh, see how how it's, it's yielding the value to you. So theory is good, which is available in many places. I think you have to get started. Just just get started the, uh, in the process that that that, that which I have suggested mostly on the uh, uh, one by one uh, with the data, uh, then uh, visualization, make the your model, deploy it, try it out. You will learn a lot about your own organization and the challenges that uh, that that, that you face, and there are plenty of solutions available there. Always remember that you have to be use open source. Don't get stringent to the monolithic system. You have to think of scaling up the system. So use these hyperscalers for the uh, Kubernetes and Docker technologies, and be be open to adopt the the newer open source technology which help us to to make it happen don't try to make it everything by by yourself there are everything available leverage them what's available in the market it will be the easy part to success rather than building something that you don't but just get started reading and doing so much there is not going to help for long that, that's fantastic and i was smiling because as you're speaking about it you're addressing uh, another question that and another theme that has emerged here in the, in the questions which is related to proprietary versus open source AI and maybe what path to take. And you have kind of indicated that already in your previous answer. And so the follow up on that is that for people who are getting started and uh, they don't even know where to start with open source AI, are, are there any uh, guidance that, is there any guidance you can give to them about where to look for open source AI where they could get started? Yeah, there are. Uh, uh, I think depending on on your industry or or you know uh, depending on the 
uh, uh, what use case you want to address, right? There are many uh, uh, many things which are available uh, uh, where you can just uh, uh, get started with. So I would say uh, uh, you have uh, the open source libraries come up with the also now TensorFlow libraries are available where you can just look at or maybe Kenas uh, are there, uh, which which also provide a large set of function. Uh, depending on if the statistical problem that that you are addressing, then uh, you have um, yeah PyPy kind of uh, areas also which which gives you a different kind of uh, uh, libraries to uh, uh, to get uh, started. So there are the many projects which are also people are contributing to the GitHub. Uh, I would say look at those those GitHub projects. If you just start with googling around it, there are and I don't want to bias with one or the one or the other as such there. But yeah, offline, if you want to connect with me, and I, I can suggest also with to you that basis on what exactly challenge you are looking for uh, to guide you what to the right open source to look based on my experiences there. But there are a wide variety of things available, and a good part of of of, of this community for AI is that all built getting built based on the uh, how people are contributing to it. So there is a solution available for everything that you talk. In the, in the initial phase, someone is contributing to that, and then uh, you know, based on a problem, we, we can look at it. There. But there are, you just start googling. I would say you you would you would get a get a best answer. But I'm also open for uh, for supporting you uh, here in case a specific problem you like to address. Fantastic, Raul. And uh, and uh, as a as a bit of a follow up on the governance discussion that you had during your presentation, we we understand intuitively the importance of governance for deploying this type of tools and techniques effectively for value creation. <clears throat> if you can go a little bit deeper on on the organizations that are doing it right and they're getting results from AI today, um, what does typically the the governance look like for organizations that are doing well? So uh, the governance look like uh, at, at, at the multiple level. So at least the organization that, that that I have been working with, and also I can talk about from our organization point of view. Uh, first, importantly, that the data access layer. So once you you, you make your data the data layer ready, uh, it has to be accessed and controlled via the uh, via the some profiles. What what we call about. So not that everyone would have access to the all kind of data. It has to be approved. Uh, by uh, authority uh, and also it to be required on the need basis. So yeah, if you need for some period of time, you get this thing and then, then, then you know you can revoke. So you have to put very strong uh, data governance uh, uh, policies basically uh, that to be make available for uh, AI. Second part is come to the data anonymization or, or data, uh, I would say some part of labeling and anonymization data. Because if you see typically problem that, that you are dealing with, you need to know the last three quarter of results and a particular region of results and you don't need to know that who got what numbers or, or what people are doing there or uh, you know which store which person has has, has bought what right we don't need to go into that what i need to know is only the uh, uh, the number of particular product which how the sale happening how much happening at that store, uh, sale and, and that particular region and i can profile the certain kind of uh, users based on that right so data analysis is, is the important part here also when we talk about data governance because I could mask the data which uh, which only I need to use for my purposes, right? And then uh, that helps me for for getting uh, for the right amount of model because then I can, I don't need to be uh, be worried about that. Am I getting into somebody personal territory or I just focused on my business problem and getting what data that, uh, that, uh, that I need uh, to have there. Then again, we create the uh, talk about data profiles uh, as well, uh, where the some kind of uh, in the past used to call data mart, but I mean in the, in the modern way we have data cataloging kind of options available, where I can blend data coming from multiple uh, multiple data sources, uh, but I only build them in a in a contextual way, and that also we go on to the who can see what data and and, and what kind of data inferences can be can be available to that. And never deliver data to the to the directly the end user is always available in the form of the the generic inferences or we have in the uh, you know categorization or sample of data or, or or stuff like that. So these are the multiple ways of of governing the data uh, in the case of AI and and how much data that we need to be bringing there. But uh, to summarize it, I would say this uh, creating the access level and the data anonymization is the very important policies that uh, we should look at uh, to get started with it. Uh, uh, the data governance area.
Um, I think you're on mute, Raul. Yeah. yeah, my microphone was off momentarily. How, Raul, always a pleasure and a gift to have you share your expertise. A true leader and practitioner of artificial intelligence. I know it's, I'm, I'm broadcasting from San Antonio, Texas, and it's morning here. And I know it's evening time in Bangalore, India. And I'm very, we're very grateful for you to take the time to share your expertise with our global audience today. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be uh, there and again, see you more uh, on your platform. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Raul Lodi, the director of for artificial intelligence at SAP, uh, directly from Bangalore, India to us and sharing uh, the best approaches for AI uh, implementation, infrastructure, uh, build up um, in, a, in an organization like SAP, uh, which is doing this uh, across all their client base and uh, around the world. So we're going to be shifting gears at the top of the hour. We're going to be moving from Bangalore, India, and we're going to be moving to another continent and the Italy, where we'll have the leader for advanced services business development and unified collaboration from Cisco. Giuseppe Barreto is going to be with us. He's gonna be talking about the migration of calling and contact centers to the cloud. Very heavy application of IT infrastructure and cloud strategies. Giuseppe has over 30 years of, of leadership experience in the telecommunications industry. And um, he will share with us the journey at Cisco that they have been through on this migration onto advanced platforms in IT infrastructure and cloud. So I will be closing the session for now and I see every one of you back at the top of the hour. Thank you.